mobile devices. You got them. I got them. We all got them. How much our phones and tablets have advanced in such a short amount of time into truly useful filmmaking tools is pretty insane. One of the first mobile episodes that we did was nine years ago when we shot an entire sketch on an iPhone. And while it still looks surprisingly good for how old it is, I had to pump a ridiculous amount of light into this scene to get it there. And these days that isn't the case. Nine years ago, no lighting, just shooting even outside looked like this. Now with the latest iPhone, I'm getting shots that look like these. But it's not just shooting that makes these devices exciting. In fact, I'd say that I use that aspect of them the least. These really have become pre through post production tools. I can even control my camera like the Blackmagic Ursa I'm shooting on right now. The last three weeks of episodes that we released, I shot alone in a room. So having this app to control the camera while I sit here was great. And then there's our teleprompter. For this, we use an app called Prompt Smart Pro. What's great about this is it hears my voice and scrolls through the teleprompter prompter based on where I'm at in the script. We can also control our lights. It's interesting how essential the iPhone and iPad has become to my everyday workflow. Even when I'm pitching, I mentioned last week how I use Keynote on my iPad to be able to present the pitch that I'm giving. So there are so many specific uses that we could focus just on writing and have 20 apps worth telling you about. But today we want sort of an overview, 10 apps from pre to post production that I have found incredibly useful. But before we do, I want to say that none of the apps we are about to mention are involved in this episode. We're not making a dime off of any of them. Okay? Okay, go. Starting with writing and developing, our first app is one that I talked about last week, and that is Milanote. It of course has a desktop version as well, but this is the main app that I use for building out ideas. You can create different project folders. So I have some specific to films I'm actively developing and some that are just for new ideas. And in the app, it's easy to throw in quick ideas whenever they pop up. And like I said, it has a desktop component too. So when I'm ready, I can shift to my computer to dig in further. And of course they have the free version for you to get started with as well. Well, for our second app, I'm gonna cheat and make it several apps because I'm a rule breaker. That's malarkey. When I was hustling a camera, the boss, old muscle bustle, scram. And these are some of my must have document apps, which are Google Docs, Evernote, and Pages. All of them are great in their own right. So depending on how you like to develop or what you are specifically writing, one of those might suit you better. But all of them are incredibly useful for more long form writing, like drafting out an outline or similar. And what's great about this with the iPad specifically for treatments or outline is that I can open an app like Pages, then split the screen with something like Google Docs or a web page or something else so pages will be where I'm writing my treatment or outline and the other side is the collection of ideas or research and I'm gonna tack on screenplay writing here too since for scripting personally I don't like writing on mobile devices but there are many who do and the best apps that I've used so far have been Celtics which you can get for free and Final Draft Mobile which I did like better but is $10 <laughs> Shot Designer Pro is another app that we have used a ton, especially for production like Ballistic or There Comes a Knocking. My DP Chase created these great floor plans that allowed us to see a bird's eye view of exactly what we were going to be doing. In here, you can add cameras, lights, talent, then build out a lighting plan and blocking. This is excellent for getting your team on the same page, but it's also great just to practice. I'll build out scenes sometimes just to mess around with ideas when I'm not working on something specific. This one is free to use on a single scene at a time and has a pro upgrade for $20. Next up is one that I have talked about for years and that's Shotlister. This app is easily one of the best on the list. It's an excellent way to build out your shot list, especially when starting out and unsure of what info you need to include since it has everything you need right there. But it's also the best scheduling app for your shoot days. You make the shot list here, then you build out your days using it, selecting the time you need for each, adding in lunch and dinner. And then when it's time for the day, you start it up and track everything as you go. And then of course you can shift things on the fly to make sure you make your day. And this one is free to download and use on two projects at once. But like the others, it has a pro version that you can upgrade to that has a lot more goodies as well. 
Lap number five moves us into production. Well, something that bridges pre-pro and production, and that is Artemis Pro. This one is a little pricey at $30, but in my opinion, it's the best viewfinder app out there, and I'm not alone since it won an Emmy. But in here, you can select your camera type and sensor and lenses, and then you were able to select those different lenses to get an accurate look at what the angle of view would be. Traditionally, you would use a pricey director's viewfinder for this, or just have to pull the camera, so this app is incredibly helpful. You can also record video and take pictures, which makes this a great app for building out storyboards and look dev for later. You can also add frame lines, temp looks, silhouette stand-ins to get a better sense of what the subject would be like in that setting. And like a lot of these apps, even when you aren't in production, this is a really good app to play around with to try to learn more. But before we move on again, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Envato Elements, which is another thing that we use all the time. And they have sponsored us before, but I've had a paid subscription to Envato Elements for years because more often than not, we don't have the time to build something custom. So we can just jump over to Envato and find a little bit of just about everything. In fact, we use the assets from Envato for this episode. All these bumpers that we've been showing are built from a template we grabbed there. All the assets are really easy to use, whether it's an After Effects asset like this one or simple overlays like these chalk arrows that we've been using. It's all very grab and go. Like this After Effects template here, it's laid out very intuitively so you're able to get in quick, change what you need and have something very polished in a short amount of time. And this could be anything from very simple text animations like this one here. You toss it in, export on alpha and you're good to go. Or it can be far more in depth like the full promo templates that we've used for some of our store pack promos or sales promos. Again, building something like that from scratch is prohibitively time consuming for us more often than not. So Envato definitely comes to the rescue there. And sure, when it comes to things like the chalk drawn assets, we could create those easily enough, but having them pre-built still saves us a ton of time when we're needing things like that over and over. And it is honestly one of the most well-rounded resources of assets that I have found online. It's like a Mary Poppins bag for filmmakers. It's just endless. Things like stock video, video templates, music, sound effects, graphic templates, photos, and a lot more. Then you get unlimited downloads from these 53 million plus assets. And this is true unlimited downloads with a very simple licensing with their lifetime commercial license. So you can use it knowing that you are good for personal and commercial work. Of course, custom stuff is great, but the majority of us either don't have the skills needed for that specific thing or the time to make that thing. And that's really what makes this invaluable. So again, if you need stock videos or images, graphic templates, music, sound effects, fonts, resumes, website templates, and a lot more, jump into the notes and follow the link to get an annual subscription for 50% off. But now jumping back in with number six. And this is an app called Sunseeker. It's $10, but it is a must have for me on Location Scouts. This one is a sun tracker and it will give you accurate data about where the sun will be at different times of the day. So when scouting your location, you can jump into 3D view and have an accurate track. So then you can decide when would be the best time to shoot there. You can also adjust the month. So if you're shooting six months from now, you can still get an accurate reading. Next up is the best app for getting the highest quality image out of your camera and that's Filmic Pro. It gives you manual control over all kinds of features like exposure and focus on your phone and pushes the image to the best possible out of that sensor. You also have support for mobile gimbals, waveform monitoring, and a ton more. And I'm not going to go super in depth here since we did a full episode on this in the past. So check out the link in the notes below for more on that. But if you plan to or are shooting on your iPhone at $15, this app is definitely worth it. Number eight moves us into visual effects. CamTrack AR is an app that is still relatively new but insanely cool. First is how it lets you track the scene right inside of your phone using the LiDAR scanner technology. And this track is rock solid, which you can then export to HitFilm, Blender, and After Effects to start your compositing and the hard part is done. But it can also work with green and blue screen to add 3D backgrounds in a sort of virtual production way. So you could build out an environment in Unreal Engine, then export and load into CamTrack AR to create a sort of Mandalorian style shooting setup. Just green screen, not LED. But still, this is badass and the first of its kind for mobile filmmaking. 
Post-production is not something that I ever thought would be doable on a phone or iPad just eight years ago, but here we are with LumaFusion. This editing app is really solid. You have all the necessities that you would expect, multiple tracks, magnetic timeline, markers and notes, plenty of effects, audio control, and so on. And just recently, they have released a new version which stacks on even more features like stabilization, external drive editing, and support for third-party plugins. I've used it a ton and I actually enjoy editing simple things on my iPad using the Apple Pencil. And this is a pretty well-featured editing app for just $30, so that's another major perk there. Again, we did a full episode reviewing this app not too long ago, so check that out in the notes below too. Our last app is something I absolutely could not live without, and that is Frame.io. We've been preaching Frame.io since the early days of the app, and it has only gotten better and better since then. It is the greatest app for collaboration that is out there. You upload your work to send to clients or collaborators to get feedback in the most useful ways. It timestamps everything, gives you ability to draw on the work and allows you to reply back and forth as well. It also gives you a very pro way to send things for review or even finals. The app is really solid too. You can bounce things straight to and from your phone and do all of the notes in there if you want as well. And this is very helpful for me since I'm running around a lot. So it makes it really easy for me to dive in and give notes to my team whenever needed. Of course, this has the desktop app as well and goes much deeper than what I'm saying here. So definitely look more into this one if you haven't. But that's it, my 10 must have apps when working with the iPhone and iPad as a filmmaker. And again, like I say every time with mobile filmmaking episodes, I'm constantly floored by what you can do. The technology here has opened up a whole new world for creatives, making things possible that really weren't before or solving problems so that we can get past those things and back into being creative. It's like having a little movie studio in your pocket or bag in the, in the case of an iPad. Well, unless you have massive pockets, you could have massive pockets, like with parachute pants, like really large pants with massive pockets, or you could have a large fanny pack. I think, I think okay. yeah, I move, think move yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Of course, links to everything we've talked about are in the notes below. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing so and hit that bell so you're notified whenever we put up new goodies. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.